I think it was probably in the last episode in this series that I mentioned that I was going to order the green alumilite dye. It would be a better match with the blue that I have here so that I could end up with the blue green that the blue goose used to be. I used to think of it as green, but anyway, uh, I think I've told that story. I have seen these for sale from different outfits for several years now and I thought I'm going to try them. Kind of expensive way to do it. I used to cut my own sandpaper and may go back to it again. We'll just see how this goes here. Now we can properly mix up the blue and the green. This is the right green. The green we were trying before was the fluorescent green and it wasn't working too good. I've been doing crazy stuff like this ever since I was probably 10 years old. After a while you kind of get to know what will work and what won't work, probably. Um, now, the best of I remember, this thing turns this way, so that means that this bolt will self-tighten in the threaded hole that I drilled through this pulley. Uh, I realize that everything here is going to vibrate and shake, but I don't think anything's going to fall down. This is just the prototype. Uh, if, it, if, it, if this is going to appear to work, then I'll make a proper little base for it. And uh, yeah, this is a, a motor out of um, my old furnace. Uh, when I upgraded to a high efficiency furnace, I saved the motor, mainly because I had only replaced it just the year before, so it was practically brand new. So, I mean, <laughs> why throw it out, right? Anyway, let's see what happens here. And like I say, it's going to rattle, but this should work. Here we go. So okay, I'll bet you you know what that's for. Okay, well, I'll we'll show you. It says stir before use. How are you going to stir this? I think probably most people shake it. Well, uh, I know I'm getting shaky, but I'm, I'm not too good at shaking. So uh, I think I'll just make some sort of lightweight little uh, fastener here that I can put this in and I think I'll put it here. And probably upside down would be better. That way if there's any sediment on the bottom it'll... What do you think? Maybe this will work. get another one. Anyway, the idea is okay. And as a famous man once said, shaken, not stirred. I modified my shaker a little bit and these are thoroughly shaken. And I was going to mix up a new batch here of the cactus juice with the dye in it. And then I thought, you know, I wonder how is this dye affected by vacuum? 
And as you can see, I've got a real high-tech apparatus here. Well, the test tube is kind of high-tech. So I'm going to put a few drops, maybe three drops of each in here. And then we'll stick it under vacuum. And we'll see if it tends to boil under full vacuum. If it does, well, uh, it's not going to work too good as far as I'm concerned in this uh, cactus juice. But I don't know. Maybe when it'll be in the... Well, let's find out. One, two, let's not waste this stuff. Now at first you're going to see what appears to be boiling, but it's not boiling. You have to remember that each one of those little containers of dye had been in my shaker for at least a minute each, and it was probably frothing up a storm something fierce in there, and froth is little bubbles, so it's degassing. Uh, but <laughs> interestingly enough though, what was boiling was the moisture inside that block of wood. It was actually quite cold when I picked it up from the uh, moisture evaporating out of there. I've let it run now for approximately five minutes and you'll notice there is a slight change in the way it's bubbling there. The bubbles are larger but there's fewer of them. Now I don't see any sense in mixing up any more here than I absolutely need. I just want to cover this with maybe a quarter of an inch above these so I think that if I probably fill this up so that it's about the same height as the top of this little handle here then put it in my jar. I won't be mixing any more than I need. At least that's the plan. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put 10 drops. You know what, I'm going to make it 15. I'm going to put 15 drops of each one of these in, plus the drops that are still in this vial. And that should give us a much stronger solution than we had last time. 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, I'm going to give it a total of 20 of each. And, uh, yeah, and if that's not enough, uh, well, I guess we'll have to add more. At least we can always add more. It doesn't have that fluorescent green in there that we have to be concerned about anymore. Anyway, let's see what's going to happen here. Maybe I should put the lid on. Well, is that sort of taking on a hint of blue-green? Similar to this. I've mixed these 40 drops up pretty good here. Just use my battery uh, terminal things here to hold this down. If they won't corrode from battery acid, they're sure not going to corrode from uh, cactus juice. Okay, now I'm going to have to just carefully get that into the vacuum chamber. Maybe I should put on rubber gloves for this one. Okay, I took a chance here and I did not put on the rubber gloves and I was lucky this time. Anyway, I'm going to have to probably do a lot more bleeding of this little valve here uh, because there are two blanks in there and you're going to notice that it's going to 
start bubbling ferociously uh, well before it gets up to maximum vacuum. Anyway, let's get on with it. We've been at this now for about 10 minutes and it's been at full vacuum for probably the last three minutes. And as you can see, we're losing a little bit to splatter, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Going to leave it now for about another two hours. So we'll check back in two hours. Surprisingly, there's still little micro bubbles bleeding out of those blanks. But in my opinion, this could go on for days. And also, in my opinion, after about two hours, the law of diminishing returns should be observed. Well, we're at about 2 hours and 15 minutes now. Okay, I think I'm going to give it about 5 minutes just sitting there. And the reason for that is, if when I'm moving it and carrying it, I accidentally let the top of the wood suck air, it'll be sucking less air. Because right now, once I took the uh, vacuum off, the pressure from the atmosphere is uh, squeezing the cactus juice into the blanks. And I will put it in the pressure pot and uh, do even more. Easy does it. Pressure's rising. That bracket you hear in the background, that's my air compressor. I bled the air off my tank so it would kick in. Sometimes gives me as much as 25 extra pounds, depending on where the tank is when I start. Anyway, you've heard me say this before. We'll see what we've got in the morning.